New York City is packed with museums and galleries, but finding contemporary Arab and Islamic art can be a challenge until now. A Qatari sheikh has just opened an institute dedicated to it, and as Jade Barker found out, he's hoping it will quash some stereotypes. Sheikh Mohammed Rashid Al Thani noticed there was something missing among New York City's cultural institutions. There was nothing dedicated to Arab Muslim artists. So the Big Apple dwelling member of the Qatari royal family decided to take matters into his own hands, founding the Institute of Arab and Islamic Art, known as AYA, in downtown Manhattan. Almost every civilization and uh, community and culture is represented. We have great examples like the Jewish Museum, like Asia Society, like Swiss Institute, uh, like the America Society. But if you want to know more about the Islamic civilization, um, you have, you know, the Met has incredible Islamic antiquity, but, you know, it doesn't go beyond that. So this is really the reason I decided that it was very important to have a home here. The inaugural exhibition is a four-woman show themed around architecture and geometric design. The artists hail from different Muslim-majority countries, represent different generations and have differing artistic approaches. But there's something all of them have in common – transcultural lives. All of them lived at some point in Western countries and this influence can be seen in their work. In their willingness to engage in diverse aesthetic and cultural traditions, the artists in the opening show embody the rewards of cultural exchange that the Aya hopes to promote. There are two Indian artists, Zarina Hashmi and Nazri Mohammadi. The former often uses the Islamic decorative arts to represent political borders, and the latter has been credited with changing the face of minimalism. Iconic 93-year-old Iranian artist Manir Shoraldi Farman Farmian's bold geometric work, which combines traditional Iranian art with modern abstraction, hangs alongside 30-year-old up-and-coming Palestinian-born Saudi artist Dana Awantani. So we get a different perspective from the region, and that in itself breaks the stereotype that all Muslims are Arab. And so it was very important to bring together artists that come from different the regions have had different experiences. What's beautiful about it is that they talk about the importance of Islamic architecture and how that touched their, their work, but then they're conversing with, uh, with movements that have happened uh, across uh, Europe and the US. And that in itself shows you how this is an incredible cultural exchange, that exhibition. It's a cultural exchange that's perhaps most apparent in Arwen Tani's work. She studied both ancient and contemporary art practices via degrees in London and an apprenticeship with Turkish illumination master Aten Tiraki, an art form that originally developed to adorn Arabic calligraphy and Quranic inscriptions and one that influenced her pieces in this exhibition. It's a decipherable code of the whole Arabic alphabet. And it's also giving geometry and illumination a contemporary feel, you know, because usually it's used as a decorative art form on, on, arch on architectural buildings, uh, you know, on books, but it never was kind of taken out of that context. Awantani says she sees sacred geometry as a universal language that can connect all faiths and cultures. Geometry itself is not just Islamic. Geometry used, is used in all sacred arts, so I think just the essence of the, the, the form and language I'm using is multicultural and it promotes a sense of unity within diversity, which I love, because anyone that can usually sees my work, they can relate to it. You know, they don't need to be an Arab or a Muslim to be, you know, understand the work. They can appreciate it for what it is from wherever culture they come from. While the Aya is still looking for a permanent home, Altani has big plans for the non-profit hub. Along with quarterly exhibitions, he wants the institute to include educational talks, a residency program and a bookstore, which will also produce publications. But above all, he hopes it will be a place that will promote cross-cultural dialogue and challenge social misconceptions. Jade Barker, TLT World, New York.